The value of this summit is just really extraordinary. I've been to three other summits like this, and this is the only one where it's really connected the, the people with the social problems and the knowledge experts about how to, what we should be using AI with, with the people such as myself who are AI technologists. And so getting that dialogue of all the stakeholders presenting that in, in just the introductions alone to the problems into each other is a wonderful contribution. So as part of my work with the Center for Robot Assisted Search and Rescue, we actually deploy to disasters, starting with the first use of robots for a disaster, which was 9-11, the World Trade Center collapse, and includes uh, Fukushima Daiichi, nuclear accident, and most recently, the uh, Syrian boat refugees coming into Greece. Well, one thing is an academic institution, we're not very good at keeping up with the latest commercially hardened technology. And you can never take something that's experimental to a disaster because you risk making things worse. So we created Roboticists Without Borders as kind of to become a dating service. So when a disaster happens, having a cadre of companies that are trained in emergency response, who've practiced and worked together, and have technology we know that will work, they've tried it out at Disaster City or at our other training facilities, and are ready to volunteer up 10 days of their time and their equipment if they are asked by an agency to go. So that can help speed the adoption. Um, for me, the big thing is, it's not to have this technology, us providing it to these agencies all over the world, but them seeing the value in investing in it themselves. So when we think about disasters, so many aspects of them. You can think of uh, something like the, Syrian boat refugees. We got involved uh, because they are actually robot lifeguard. They're really lifeguard assistants. Think of a very large life preserver, one of those throwable ones, but on a miniature jet ski robot. So now the lifeguards from a Coast Guard cutter or from a boat can zoom it out and get five to eight people can hang on and give the lifeguards time to deal with, say, the other 30 or 40 or 50 people that may be in more immediate danger and that they need to jump in the water to help with and deal with. Well, that sounds like a good use of AI, having uh, a robot that's smarter, that's easier to control. But then you discover that the robots, they like the two-way audio because they need to to talk to the, to the people on board to see if anybody's injured or has hypothermia. But they don't all speak Syrian. Everybody's speaking English as kind of an intermediate language. And then there's people from Afghanistan and Libya and other countries. And now, now you're going into, we really need to start using AI to help sort out the languages and to generate and, and to explain things and, and get things there. And then you're realizing that it's not just the Hellenic Coast Guard. There's a group of NGOs, not just the Hellenic American Red Cross, but these professional lifeguard teams from Spain and Portugal and around the world who are helping. And can we coordinate with them? And then who needs to know about the information? If you know that you've got eight boats of refugees with about 50 in each, and it's a set of families, highly family-oriented, the people on land who are preparing the housing and the transportation, now they can start preparing and knowing in advance. And then how do you use machine learning to start projecting, oh, well, it's, it's a, a dark night, but a full moon and the wind's down, so we should expect eight to nine boats versus two to three. What are the things that we can start using AI for? There's so many possibilities. For me, I go to these AI and ethics workshops all the time, and it's always been, oh, we don't want to weaponize robots, we don't, AI is bad. You know, it's like, oh, we must make AI good. You know what, I think that in the cases of disaster response, it's unethical not to use robots. Unmanned aerial vehicles, unmanned ground vehicles, underwater vehicles can radically change the way we respond to disasters, the way we prevent disasters, the way that we accelerate economic recovery, the way that we prevent people from being displaced or having long-term injuries. And it's to the point where it's unethical not to use it. So I'd like to see that on the ethics table. Okay.